If you'd like to work along with me at home, open the Project Files folder, Lesson 5 folder, and Formatting Details. Now this video is for those who want to cross their T's and dot their I's. It's going to have a lot of little details in here about how to work with formatting. And for the most part, you may have gotten everything you needed to know from the formatting payroll exercise we did earlier. But if you want more detail, if you're just dying to know all the little intricacies about working with formatting, well, let's go. All right, we're going to take a look at these three groups here in the ribbon, font, alignment, and number, and take a look at this little drop-down arrow here and just see what all that's about. First off, with font formatting, there aren't any real surprises here. However, we'll just take a look at each one of these things and just examine it quickly so that you get an idea of what's going on. First off, to change the font, all you have to do is click the drop-down arrow here. And I've got lots of fonts that you probably don't have. You probably have some that I don't have. Doesn't matter. Just pick whatever font you want, and that applies that to that particular cell. Font size. If you click the drop-down arrow here, you're going to see a list of font sizes. What I like about this option and the font option is Live Preview. When you hover your mouse over any one of these numbers, you can see the Live Preview happening out there on the font size. Nothing actually gets committed until you click on one of the numbers. So I'll click on the 28. And now I've committed to that font size. OK, increase font size. This is if you just want to bump up your font size a little bit at a time. So each time you click this button, it bumps up the font size. Decrease font size just goes the other direction. Click to bump down. The bold, well, that's just exactly what you'd expect it to be. It applies bold to any cell. Italic, same thing, no surprises here. Underline, one little thing here. There's a drop-down arrow you may not have seen, and this allows you to choose a double underline instead of just a single underline. Now, as if that weren't enough, if you needed another underlining choice, you could click the dialog box launcher here for the font group. Let's go there. This opens the Format Cells dialog box and brings the Font tab to the front. Now the Format Cells dialog box is a one-size-fits-all dialog box. You're going to get the same dialog box whether you click the launcher for font, alignment, or number. It's just a matter of which tab comes to the front whenever you select that option. So here we are in the Font tab, and we can see down here that we have this underline drop-down list, which allows us to use a single accounting or double accounting underline. Okay, so if you ever need to have fancy underlines, there you go. While we're looking in here, you can also see that you can set the font from this dialog box. You can set the bold italic underline from here. You can also set the font size. And although you can't see live preview out here in the cells, you can see a preview down here. So if you decide to change the font size to something outlandish like 72, you can see that in the preview here before you apply it to your cell. Wow, that's pretty big. I'll just undo that. We did a complete video on working with borders, so I'm not going to touch on that here. But fill color, well, you should know what that is. Click the drop-down arrow and pick a color. What's the difference between theme colors and standard colors? Well, I have a whole video dedicated to that coming up in this series, but for now, let me say this. If you use a standard color, then that standard color is going to stay permanent. It's not going to change unless you come up here and change it. But theme colors are dynamic. They may change based on the theme that you've chosen for your workbook. But more on that a little later. Another thing you might notice is that once you've chosen a color from the drop-down list, here I'll just choose this orange color, that color appears underneath the face of the button so that you don't have to go back to the drop-down list to get that same color again. You can just click on the face of the button and apply it. Over in the font color, that's this little A here. Notice the white swatch under it. That's going to change the font color to white, basically making it disappear there on that cell. So I'd better choose another color. Let's just choose blue. All right, let's get down to this source cell. Here I have some formatting applied to that, and I'd like to apply that same formatting to these targets here. And even though it's not in the font group, it's actually in the clipboard group, we're going to use the Format Painter to take the formatting from this cell and paint it on the other cells. Much like copy and paste, we can target just the formatting on a cell, ignoring the content, and just paste the format on top of our targets. You start by clicking in your source cell and then just clicking on the Format Painter. Notice that it turns color, indicating that it's turned on. And then simply go over and click on your target. Without changing the contents of the cell, it simply changes the formatting. Now notice that the Format Painter turns off after a single use. So you say, how could I get multiple uses out of that? Well, that's pretty simple. Click in your source again, and then double click on the Format Painter so that it stays turned on. And then you can happily go about your worksheet 
clicking on your targets, or even drag your mouse down across multiple targets to select each one. When you're finished, just click on the Format Painter again to turn it off.